Hey, what's going on YouTube? Alabama Reloader here. Um, coming to you with a <clears throat> follow-up video for the 270 Winchester. Um, went out to the range this past Saturday. Uh, just had a really good overall experience at the range. Had a lot of stuff I had to shoot. I've got a ton of stuff loaded up in the 270, um, but several things. It's more velocity and, you know, slash pressure testing that I'm doing on that. And I didn't have a chronograph with me, so I wasn't able to, to do everything. Um, but I, wor I was able to shoot a few groups. I had loaded up some of these guys right here. <clears throat> these are the, the 130 grain uh, Nosler solid base bullets that I had picked up from Ken out in Oregon. Um, picked up a bunch of those. I think it's 300 I got uh, of those and then 200 of the 130 grain uh, partitions. So we're going to work up a load with the solid base. That, that was the, this is the precursor to the uh, ballistic tip. So the ballistic tip now, you know, it's got the polymer tip on it. This was the previous version, I guess, if you will, um, was the solid base. And so right now, pretty much what we're doing, I'm thinking about going back and running this test again um, on these groups. I loaded up some three-shot groups, five, I believe it was five three-shot groups, maybe, something like that. 52.3, um, 52 52.6, 52 0 0.9, and then 53.2. So that's kind of like in the middle of the range. If you go and look at Hodgson's uh, load data for uh, stay ball 6.5 and 270 Winchester 130 grain bullet. They use the Hornady, uh, Hornady 130 grain, so not identical bullet types, uh, but their range goes from like 51 up to 55.5, I believe. So we're basically in the middle of that range um, on their load data. And Nosler doesn't have load data, you know, with 6.5 stay ball, so. We, we just stuck to kind of the middle of the of the road there. Uh, and of course it's, you know, the rifle is my Steyr Pro Hunter stainless. Um, we're using six hour brass, so really good stuff. Um, I've already got them primed up. We're using federal gold metal match, large rifle primers. Now on, on the first go around, <clears throat> so if you look at Nosler's, load data, their overall length for, I believe they're all their 130 grain bullets in 270, I believe it's 3.320. Well, I wasn't paying attention to when I was seating the bullets and I seated these guys 60 thousandths shorter at 3.260. So I'm, I'm kind of wanting to redo this test. Um, I'm at least gonna load up these two charge weights here and then probably 53.2 and up above there. Uh, I'll show you on the target why. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. I just, I was a little, I wasn't happy with myself once I realized I had made that mistake and I didn't want to go and, you know, use my bullet puller and try to, you know, just kind of stretch the overall length. I just, I was like, you know what? I've already loaded them up, whatever. I'll just go shoot them and see how they do. So um, right here's the 52 grain group so so not too bad there that ended up being 1.149 inches they're all three shot groups and then there's the 52.3 uh, that was the best group out of the bunch it was a 0 0.903 inch group so really good there and then this is where that third and fourth group we got some funky stuff going on two in one hole and then we drop one down below because uh, if you'll notice our point of impact didn't necessarily really shift much at all um, in terms of vertically between the first two groups, but then you'll notice on the third and the fourth, we start to open it up. So the third there, go too high and then drop one low. And then on the fourth, I had no idea what happened here on this group. This group ended up being basically a three inch group. No clue what happened there because then we turn right, right back around and our fifth group at 53.2 tightened back up to basically one inch, 1.09 inches. Um, and you'll see our point of impact shift. So that was the very first group. And then by the time we were done at the fifth group, you know, that was point of aim. 
and our point of impact had shifted up a couple of inches. Um, so that's what I'm thinking that that middle range right there, that's one of those transitional periods where your point of impact starts to really shift, uh, which can wreak havoc on your groups. Um, you see that there, you know, everything was tight and then all of a sudden shoot two up, you know, kind of high and then drop one down low. So I believe that's just one of those transitional spots that we're, we're probably just going to stay away from. Um, so I think I'm just going to retest, uh, retest these at the correct overall length and and that might be one of the things too uh i should just hit dispense um you know maybe at the correct overall length it might yeah, maybe that wouldn't be what it is right maybe it's not necessarily a transitional period at the correct overall length i don't know um but we're just gonna go back we'll try 52 point or 52 52.3 at the at the manual overall length of 3.320 and then we'll go uh, we'll do 53.2 uh, 0 0.5 and 0 0.8 so we'll have we'll have five three shot groups we'll load up another 15 rounds and give those a try but we'll load them at um, at at nosler's overall length of 3.320 so that's kind of the the process that we're going to follow i was i was really pleased though i was kind of nervous uh, i was wondering how those loads we're going to shoot i've tried stay ball 6.5 and some other and some other cartridges i just i don't really get the the accuracy that i get with some of the other powders that that are more my go-to powders but on the bottle itself uh on the powder bottle it says that it's ideal for 270 winchester so if you go back to my previous video i kind of talk about that that if that's the case then we're going to really utilize this powder with 130 grain bullets and, and see if we can dial in a really good load. Looks like we're on to something, uh, especially with that first and second group, you know, looks like we're, we're on to something, um, around an inch there. If we can stay, if we can, if we can get to sub MOA, you know, that I'll take that all day long, especially out of, out of my 270 is strictly basically a hunting rifle. So, uh, but yeah, that's it. Um, that's really the the update for 270 Winchester. I'm just trying to get these uh, loaded up. So now we'll jump over to 52.3. Um, and I, you know, I've got my 180 grain hunting load worked up. And then I also threw... Um, God, I've got some Hornady 130 grain, uh, their boat tail, you know, soft point or whatever. And I had worked up a velocity test with those using some Ramshot Magnum and up at 65 grains of Ramshot Magnum. I mean, those things were at 3,200 feet per second, just smoking out of, uh, out of my rifle. So I just went back, I think I loaded up like maybe 17 or 18 of those, um, and I just wanted to see where they grouped, how they grouped and where their point of impact was relative to my 180 grain load. The 180 grain load is, is coming in at 24, yeah, 2400 feet per second. And that's 3200 feet per second. So I was using the same point of aim. Uh, so that's the difference in our point of impact there between those two bullet weights. So, you know, I, I don't have a lot of time left in the season. Um, Deer season ends February 10th here in Alabama, so I just don't have a ton of time left. I would like to get back in the woods, and I'd really like to try to get one or two more deer would be, I mean, I'd be tickled to death if I could get two more because I really want to use the 350 Legend, which we still have sitting up here, um, to take a deer to see how it performs and then also... Uh, you know, use one of these loads out of the 270 Winchester, whether it be the solid base, you know, the 130 grain solid base or the 130 grain Hornady or the 180 Woodleys. I mean, I, I, I don't know. It, I'd be hard pressed to pick between them on which one I wanted to take into the woods, but I'm really hoping I, I think I'm going to maybe take some time off work right there that final week of the season, um, take some time off work and, and try to, try to go just hang out <laughs> in the woods as much as possible I, i've got to get an opportunity a shot opportunity 
I'm hoping a, a couple more times. So see how these bullets perform. But that's really it. I mean, we're we're not doing anything too crazy. We're just um, going back, working up some loads, uh, or going back doing some some additional testing with the six five stay ball. So good initial performance here with the one thirties. Uh, we're just going to keep tweaking on it from there. Uh, here we go. So that's it. Uh, nothing too wild. So we will catch y'all next time. Um, there we go. Let's see. Yeah, if y'all... Uh, by the way, if y'all like these targets, these things are really nice. Punch great holes, really good kind of a card stock material. Uh, go check out Midway Pistol out in Gurley, Alabama. Go pick up a pack of targets. You know, let them know I sent you over there. They'd be happy to see you. Talk to Robert and Mark, great guys. Um, and then if you need any reloading components or anything like that, make sure you hit up Mr. Big Guns over in Huntsville. Uh, Matt and, and his staff, they do a great job trying to keep the shelves stocked, even in these crazy times. Um, but yeah, so if you're, if you're in the need, you know, in need of anything reloading wise, firearm wise, whatever, I think they got in a big shipment of, uh, of strip lowers here recently. So if you, you know, if you're in the market for those, they've got, you know, AR parts, whatever you need, still had some ARs when I was in there a couple of weeks ago, I think for like five ninety nine. So, you know, that kind of stuff just swing by, you know, talk to Matt, Tom, tell them I sent you. I know they'd appreciate it. Um, yeah, that's it. So y'all have a good one. Stay tuned for the 270 uh, follow-up on, on how these 130s turn out. So we'll catch y'all next time. Y'all have a good one.